Merong Latin word na pika-pika. Yan ang tawag nila sa isang species ng bird called a magpie na kilala para sa kanilang pangungulekta at pagkain ng kahit na anong bagay. In medical terms, pika is a feeding and eating disorder that is commonly associated with the autism spectrum disorder and intellectual disabilities. Kaya tara, usap tayo. Let's get talking. Mabuhay! Ako si Teacher K, isang registered speech-language pathologist based in Quezon City. Tulad ng nasabi ko sa intro, ang PICA ay isang feeding and eating disorder ayon sa DSM-5 or ang Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. Pero di tulad ng ibang feeding issues na hinahandle ng speech-language pathologist tulad ng problema sa pagmuya or problema sa paglunok, PICA is considered a persistent and compulsive need to eat whatever kahit na it is non-nutritive ang Ilan sa mga commonly ingested items ay yung mga charcoal or uling, ash, paper, chalk, baby powder, ground coffee, eggshells, minsan nakakita rin ng mga yellow, at yung ibang mas dangerous katulad ng mga pera or coins. So just by imagining that, you can already see why this is considered a very life-threatening behavior. At ang nakakagulat dito is no matter how debilitating pika seems, there is still not much research about this. There is still no definitive cause for pica. Although marami-rami na ang medical research that shows that it could be a deficiency in some nutrients in a person's diet. One of the factors affecting the lack of research is because usually pica goes unreported until nagka-complications na. So what are some of these complications? Kapag nakapansin na sila ng bowel problems, kapag meron na silang hinala of an obstruction. So things like kapag meron na tayong choking incidences or hindi na siguro makadumi yung tao kasi may nakablock na dun sa kanyang digestive system. Pika also has dangers for perforation or yung mapupunit yung mga inner organs natin or mabubutas. And of course, because we are talking about non-edible items, yung walang nutritive properties na kailangan ng ating body, there are also dangers of parasites, toxicity, infections. And my main concern for this video, even if hindi ko special tito, and I will tell you later which professionals you can approach for help with this, I mainly want to discuss the types of treatments that we can try doing at home para ma-prevent natin yung pika. But before we get to that, ano ba ang criteria to diagnose it as pika? Ayon dun sa DSM-5, dapat number one, that the eating of non-edible items has been going on for at least least one month and is starting to significantly impact the person's health. Number two, dapat daw may cut off. So a diagnosis can only be made after two years old to make sure na hindi accidental yung ingestion because we know that when babies are curious, they put things in their mouths. So for us to say that it's pica, the accidental ingestions are not included. Number three, dapat i-consider yung cultural and societal background ng tao. Because in different parts of the world, ingesting non-food items are part of their spiritual beliefs or they may have different beliefs about their medicinal properties. And number four, the only time that we make a separate PICA diagnosis if hindi siya tied or secondary to another mental condition. And this is why it's relevant to my practice because there is a huge statistic of people who are on the spectrum or with intellectual disabilities that suffer from PICA. Marami pang ibang conditions that are associated with PICA, for example, schizophrenia or ARFID, which means avoidant or restrictive food intake disorder. Minsan nga nakakapansin din sila ng pika behaviors sa mga pregnant women. But in this case, I'm only going to talk about the two conditions that I have most experience with and that is ASD and ID or Autism Spectrum Disorder and Intellectual Disability. In a study of participants with pika, nakita nila na 23% had Autism Spectrum Disorder and 28% had both Autism Spectrum Disorder and Intellectual Disability. Isa pang statistic na nakikita ay the higher the severity of a certain condition like intellectual disability also increases the prevalence of pica. 
So now that I've defined PICA and I've given you some examples of what the possible effects are in a person's life, pag-usapan na natin yung mga things that we can do to prevent these behaviors or decrease the incidences of PICA. One of the first things that they tell you to do is to get imaging of the person's digestive system. Bakit? Siyempre, kapag napapansin natin kumakain sila ng kung ano-ano at hindi naman natin sila nasusubaybayan at every single second, gusto nating siguraduhin na walang natitira dyan sa ating mga organs organs na kung meron mang laman kunyari sa chan or sa small intestine ay maaaring makagawa agad ng emergency surgery para matanggal ito. Pangalawang suggestion ay getting blood tests. Kasi marami na rin silang nakita na pica could be caused by a zinc or iron deficiency. In which case, ang sinusubukan lang nila is either give medication to increase the zinc and the iron in the body or to change the diet of this person to include more zinc and irons naturally in their food. Yun nga lang, nakikita nila na yung mga taong may pica na meron ding autism spectrum disorder o meron ding intellectual disability ay hindi responsive sa medication. So, anong approach usually ang ginagawa? Behavioral or lifestyle changes. From a medical perspective, when we say behavioral, that means if we want to change a certain behavior, we must manipulate the consequences. So a lot of the suggested treatment plans go by this framework. So I'm going to give you a few of the treatments na nakikita sa studies that have an 80% efficiency of reducing pica. The first idea and is a very common theme in all of these behavioral treatments is aversive stimulus. Meaning, you provide something unpleasant right after ginawa ng undesired behavior, supposedly, para next time mababawasan yung behavior na yun. Kasi, ayaw nila yung ibibigay mong punishment or that aversive stimulus. Isang example na nabasa ko is they have a water mist with what they call an aromatic ammonia. Guys, disclaimer, we do not want to further damage these individuals. So do not try any of these unpleasant chemicals without seeking professional help. Pero ang sinasabi nito ay right after nila, for example, magsubo at maglunok ng something, spray itong water mist with that unpleasant odor para next time maaalala nila, ay, pag kumain ako ng ganito, maaamoy ko na naman yung mabaho or yung unpleasant na smell. Hopefully, with a goal of, hindi na nila gagawin yun kasi ayaw nila yung consequence. You will see this kind of pattern over and over with all these treatment plans. Meron pang theory of overcorrection where ang dami mong ipapagawang unpleasant after or marami kang unpleasant consequences. So, for example, yung isang bata ay, ang kinakain niya ay yung kinukutkut niya sa dingding. So, aside na nga from the fact na na danger nila by ingesting that, nagkakalat pa sila dun sa kinukot-kot nila. So, an example of trying this overcorrection is, nakita mong nagsubo siya, magsispray ka na nga nung mabahong water mist, tapos, ipapaligpit mo pa sa kanya yung mga kinutkot niya. Tapos, magpapathorough clean ka pa of their hands and their mouth. Another technique na nabasa ko is time out. So, this is something that they've also tried to decrease pica. So, kunyari, nakita mong nag-ingest siya ng something, ilalayo mo siya from these triggering factors or places. So, ita time out mo siya from the opportunity to do it again. So, as you can see, very important yung timing when we deliver these consequences. There was also another treatment called non-contingent reinforcement. Non-contingent meaning walang connect or random. And with this, they try to deliver rewards either at a fixed schedule or iba-iba din, walang schedule. But ang pinaka-important is hindi siya connected to the behavior. So para bang they're trying to decrease this behavior by making any other random time just so pleasurable na bakit ko pagagawin yun? Eh, I'm being given naman a reward at random times. Another treatment is called response effort modification. Basically saying na kung gusto mong palitan yung behavior na to, kailangan papaltan mo siya ng another behavior and this new behavior that I'm suggesting, we want to make it so much easier to do than this undesirable behavior na pipiliin na lang nila itong bagong behavior na to. So, for example, napansin natin na yung bata ay mahiling magkutkot at kainin yung dingding dun sa bedroom niya. 
Pero itong batang to, mahilig din siyang kumain ng popcorn sa kitchen. So mga pwede nating gawin is pahirapan natin yung pagpunta niya dun sa bedroom niya or pagstay sa bedroom niya for prolonged periods of time and encourage being in the kitchen. So kunyari, mas dun kayo mag-hangout sa kitchen. At tuwing nasa kitchen siya, meron siyang pwedeng kainin na popcorn na favorite na favorite niya. So it's so much easier to get this one favorable item than the other. Eventually, if you favor na lang niya sana, yung eating popcorn in the kitchen. Very similar and related to this naman is differential reinforcement. So for example, every time gawin niya yung undesirable behavior or nagsubor, may kinain na naman siyang hindi food item, meron siyang konting punishment. Pero every time gagawa siya ng isang other type of behavior, ay dun mo siya binibigyan ng sobrang daming rewards. So kung ikaw din, di ba, pagpipiliin ka, dun ba ako gagawa sa napapunish ako or dun ako gagawa doon sa nare-reward ako. And for the last three suggestions, these are things that I have tried myself. So one is called response blocking or response interruption where dapat sobrang alisto tayo dun sa mga prompting behaviors ng bata or ibig sabihin nakikita na natin na op oh, malapit na siyang sumubo or op oh, nakatingin na siya doon sa coin mukhang pwede niyang isubo yan papunta pa lang siya doon sa behavior, bago pa niya magawa yung behavior, malalagyan ko na ng obstacle yung bata. So for example, mabilis, nakita natin pa reach na siya doon sa gusto niyang isubo. Dito pa lang, ibablock ko na yung kamay niya at hindi niya makukuha yung item. The theory of this is, ang ganda ng timing because you catch them at just the right moment of doing the behavior. So alam na alam niya what they are being stopped from doing. And the other is, with the repetition sana of them thinking, oh, every time ginagawa ko to, nagkaka-obstacle, huwag ko na lang gawin. And this is one of the management techniques that I do a lot in therapy, regardless if it's about eating or any other undesirable behavior. Dapat alisto tayong mapigilan bago pa nila gawin. And the other one is dependent on the person's comprehension level. Kaya importante ipaintindi sa kanila yung discrimination of food item ba to? Is this an okay thing to eat? Should we eat this? Or, eh, ito, hindi to dapat kinakain. Mm -mm, Non-food. So, of course, this is a longer process. It is so dependent on the child's intellectual and cognitive capacity. But, we keep doing it. Kasi ultimately, that's what we want. For the child or the person, the individual, no matter how old they are, to be able to understand, ay, that's not gonna be good for me. These are tools that they should be able to have themselves to stop them from their life-threatening behaviors. And overall, as with all of this, the most important suggestion is constant surveillance. Dapat kapag napansin na natin na parang nagkakaganitong behavior yung bata or talagang may ganito na siyang behavior, laging may nagbabantay. But because hindi natin mapapromise ang talagang round-the-clock surveillance, mas lalo kung kunyari, single parent ka, kayong dalawa lang sa bahay, kailangan mo namang maligo. Things that may be able to help are having locks, especially on doors or cabinets or drawers anywhere that can get dangerous substances. And kung may kakayahan na lagyan ng CCTV or or other monitoring devices yung mga rooms ninyo. Parang yung iba, di ba, meron kayong baby monitor, parang laging nakikita nyo kung anong nangyayari dun sa baby. Pwede rin kayong gumawa ng parang ganitong system sa inyong bahay. Paalala lang po, nabanggit ko na to kanina, hindi ko pa natatry ang ibang strategies dito, only yung last three na sinabi ko. So, bago kayo mag-try nito, mas importanteng humingi muna kayo ng tulong sa professionals. Kung walang kakayahan na magpatingin, pero dahil sobrang life-threatening nito, subukan pong pumunta sa mga institusyon or sa mga ospital na merong mga charity ward. Kasi kailangan po talagang humingi ng advice ng doktor at ang mas mapapayo ko ay possible occupational therapy for their behaviors. Kung naging helpful ang video nito, you can like and leave me comments and also subscribe to this YouTube channel at Teacher K Talks. To pay it forward, please share it with your friends and also follow me on other social media accounts, Facebook and Instagram and TikTok at Teacher K Talks. And hanggang sa muli, happy talk and mabuhay!